Hey, everybody, was that a wave? Yeah. That was a wave. Oh, my God. Check out, hey, everybody, check out my new six-foot stick. Woo! Hey, here we are. It is episode number 76, and this is a very special episode. I'm going to cover all the dominoes, both dominoes, and the top questions we had over the years, or I've had over the years. But first, I got to introduce the room. Right behind this camera is Chris, the unit cyber. Over here, right, no, right over here is Big D. And he's not his usual position. Right over here is Garrett. He's handling questions. And don't forget to tell us where you are from. Now, here's the wicked special part about this. Chris, pan this crowd. Check this out. We are live from Hotville Hardware and Lumber in Hotville, Ohio. Woo! Yeah, baby! Okay, thank you everybody for attending Festool Live. That's a wrap. I'm just kidding. Okay, so I got to do a call out. I have to thank Hotville Hardware and Lumba for letting us do this live presentation here. We really appreciate you guys hosting this. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Okay, now, it's Christian here, the Festool expert. Okay, I got to, hang on a second, hang on, hang on, hang on. Christian, how long ago did I train you? So I come in here and I pick up this CAD and I see Christian McCartney, Hotville Hardware Festool Specialist. Extra help with a personal touch. If you're ever here at Hatfield Hardware, get a picture of this kid, of this young man. Okay? I can call anybody kid. I just turned 32. Okay, right over here. That is your Festool expert here at Hotville Hardware and Tool. And Lumba. Okay, good. Woo! All right. So, what am I doing? All right. <clears throat> so, over the, this is episode 76. I'll call it out again for everybody. And what's important about it is I'm combining a lot of tips and tricks because of the questions I've gotten. I've designed different Festool episodes on the Domino around those top questions. But now I'm going to cover a lot of them and add a few. I hope that made sense. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to cover is what we call the four, whew, four rules of the domino, okay? I'm going to concentrate and do most of this <coughs> with the domino 500, and the reason I'm going to do this is because it's lighter and I don't like to lift heavy equipment. I'm just kidding. Okay, the reason I want to do it, it'll all, everything I teach you will transfer to the 700. But what's really important is at the very end, I'm going to cover one of the top questions I get all the time. In fact, Lou, right here, asked me that question right before I started. So I'm going to cover that as well. Okay, so let's start right here. And <clears throat> through the course of the first five years I was with Festool, the Domino had just come out the year before I started. And I would get these questions. Hey, man, I would be out at whatever store. My boards are coming in like this, tilted like this. My boards are coming in tilted like this. My, uh, my boards are offset ever so slightly. Okay, and it seems like my dominoes are shrinking. So I call this the four rules of the domino. And I'm going to cover it, and that's the first uh, segment of this live. So, and as I go through this, you're going to pick up tons and tons of tips. And hopefully, okay, so that's that camera. Oh, this is cool. So hopefully we can get it down here where you can see. I'm going to be working off the Vaxis. And the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is, by the way, when I teach working with the Domino, it's basically a lot of it's woodworking 101. It's referencing the right face, okay? So hopefully you, you understand that. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> and we'll start with this. This is a domino. This is the domino machine. This is what creates the mortise. This is the tenon we supply. This is a 5 by 30, okay? 5 millimeters being the thickness of the domino. That is where, and you're going to hear me a hundred times during this presentation, I'm going to be talking about long grain to long grain adhesion, glue line strength. Not shear strength, but glue line strength. Okay? 30 
being the length. Okay, so let's do, how many people here use metric? Wow, that's really cool. Okay, okay, so let me ask you this. What's half of 30? You're all wicked good at metric. Yeah, come get out of here. Okay, so this is the thing that people get too wrapped up in. What size domino do I use? And in woodworking, okay, I was taught this er, when I was a kid. That was last year, okay? It's right here. We call it what? The third, third, and the third rule, right? Where those are your shoulders, that's your mortise, and that's your other shoulder, right? Third, third, and the third. So if this is 18 millimeter thick plywood, divide that by three. You guys are wicked good at metric, I'm telling you, okay? But when I'm using three quarter, I use, in hardwood, I use a six by 40. But when I use plywood, I use a five by 30. Because if you think about this, so I plunge, 15 in here and 15 in here, that could come out the other end, okay? I, and it, or it's too close to the outside face if I'm building a cabinet. So when I'm working with plywood, I always fault on a five by 30. When I'm working with hardwoods, say I'm doing a miter joint, and if I have time, I'll do that today. Majority of the stuff I'm doing is with a five by 30 because I gotta be simple. Uh, You'll see what I'm talking about. Miter joints, three-quarter miter joints, I'm using a six by 40 day in, day out. Okay, so follow me on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two boards together like this. And you know, when, if you've ever used a biscuit joint, a dowel, you make lines on here, right? The only mark I'm gonna make on here, and I always do this, okay? That's how I mark my board, okay? Hey, you guys ever see a, can you get in here? I'll show you a picture of my ex. See that? Okay, never mind. No? Wait for, oh, 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 you got it? Was that okay? Picture of my ex? Never mind. Okay, okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to check my bit on here. <laughs> okay? Now this is the wrench that comes with the domino joiner. Don't ever lose it. This, is, this alone is $300, okay? So don't ever lose it. All right, so I get this little tab right here, and I'm gonna pop it off like that, okay? And <clears throat> that's your bit right there, okay? It's got a flat spot. This tab here is your ABA lock, okay? I'm gonna take it like this, and you spin it off. Now I'm doing this because I wanna show you a tip. This is a threaded, end mill, basically, right? This machine is spinning at 25,500 RPM and is oscillating back and forth. Did I say that right? Oscillating? Oscillating, that's it, okay. When you put this back on, okay, when you thread it back on, I see people crank this on. You don't have to. What you do is you just take it like this and you just snug it, that's it, okay? Don't put too much pressure on there and I'm gonna put it on here. Now, we decided this was 18 millimeter plywood. I hope we can get in here. I know you can, Chris. See this gauge block right here? Okay, the little number that appears in, oh, maybe I can, oh, this is so backwards, I love it. I can't even get that, okay. The number that appears in there is the thickness of my material. Okay, I'm gonna default on 20 on this. Okay, I'm gonna push it down like this and lock it in. This is my angle, we'll use that in just a little while. Okay, now let's define the machine. This part here that has this arc is called the plate and the square part here is called the base. There's references all over this. On, on, on the lives that we've done with Domino, I've gone through every one of them. Okay, so you can go, uh, what, I, what I keep saying that is the Festool Live is a great reference to, because it's basically the training program on every Friday at noon. Okay, so I've marked my board and I'm going to start right here. I'm going to put it on my Vaxxis. Now here is, and I was talking to somebody upstairs this morning, first thing. He's going, hey, can I work on the table with my, with my uh, domino like this? Yeah, you can, but guess what? If you, it's, the reference is now your base. Are you guys following me on this watch? I'm gonna try to get it out here so you guys see it. If I have this set at 20, 
okay? And this base is sitting on my table. I want you to see where the offset is right here. See that little line right there? That is a humongous mistake that I used to make. <laughs> and guess what? I've heard it hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm getting an offset with my domino joiner. I tell everybody, always work the plate. This is rule number one. Work the plate off the referenced face. Always. Mark your boards. That's woodworking 101. I'm using it on here. This could go up against my jointer. This could go up my, against my table saw fence. You always mark your boards. Okay? Rule number two. Work above the plane of the table. Okay? Don't work on a table. Work above it so the base isn't, uh, is unimpeded. In other words, with a vaxis, it's just natural because it, that plate sits perfectly flat on there. <coughs> hey, um, Garrett, yeah. just keep me abreast of the time, okay? <coughs> okay, so you saw that I didn't mark the board, right? I'm gonna be using this little tab right here. The distance from the tab, there's two of them. The distance from the tab to the center of the bit, does anybody know? 37 millimeter. Does anybody here have a kitchen? That's a loaded question. I hope you guys eat, gals eat, okay. <clears throat> you know your adjustable pins for your shelves? The distance from the front edge to the center of there is 37 millimeter. And from the back to the center is 37 millimeter. Our entire system at Festool is built around the 32 millimeter uh, cabinet, okay? Or system. So I'm going to do that, and you're going to notice this. This is the other one. I've set the depth at 15 right here. And you see this? This is another one I'm going to cover in a few minutes. This is lateral tolerance. The thickness of the domino is your glue line strength. Not just strength, but glue line strength. So <clears throat> what I do here on the succeeding mortises is I add lateral tolerance. It helps in... A, it helps in alignment for assembly. You'll see in a minute as I do both pieces. So I'm going to turn it on, and Big D, you can still hear me even though I'm not going to yell, okay, because this is going to be running, okay. I'm going to take it like this, I'm going to shoulder it, and I'm going to plunge from the back of the machine. That's rule number three. Plunge in line. And rule number four, I just did it. Plunge at a consistent, steady rate. Not too slow and not too fast, okay? If you plunge too fast, and I used to hear this day in, day out in the early days, <clears throat> my dominoes are shrinking. That's impossible, okay, because of the way they're cut. What's happening is that bit is oscillating like this and spinning at 25,000 RPM, and if you plunge too fast, it gives it a climb cut. So the mortise grows this way. You've lost glue line strength 100%. So slow down, plunge at a steady rate, and you'll have success. I can tell you right now, that's 99.999% of the frustrations I have seen with the domino joiner. And I did every single one of them the first 10 years I worked at Festool. That's how good I am. Okay, never mind. Okay, good. Okay, so I just did that mortise, right? Now, I didn't mark my boards. Let me show you this. Let me show you how tight this is. Okay? And you'll see that. See how that goes right in? I have perfect glue line strength, just like that. There's no lateral tolerance this way. How many people here have a domino? I can retire. <laughs> Look at this. See that? <laughs> okay? There's no movement here, and you have that glue line adhesion, long grain to long grain. Okay? So there you go. So the next one, I'm going to make it a little six millimeters, three millimeters on each side this way. Show you right now. It's easy, but I'm not going to measure it. I'm going to use these, and these are so misunderstood. On the bottom of your domino joiner, you have these little dovetails. See them? This is what these are for, okay? You have another, you see, remember I used the flap? This is another referencing pin, and I'm gonna use that in here, just like this. It's gonna go in this mortise, see this? I'm gonna put it in here, this is gonna be attached to the machine, and I'm gonna bring it this way. That way there, 
I could space them six inches apart. Okay, so let's do a little metric. When I was a kid, I was taught 25 millimeters is roughly what? One inch, right? Okay. Does anybody have a Rotex RO150? Okay, what size pad is that? Okay, so 25 millimeters into 150 equals? Ah, so that's how this whole thing is. So I have these set at 150 millimeters. Okay? Okay. Does anybody have an ETS-125? What size pad is that? How many times does 25 go into 125? Man, you're good at metric, I'm telling you. He doesn't want to brag, but he's going. Okay, good. Okay, so let me set this up. You, whenever you put stuff on the machine, make sure it's on a dead flat surface, okay? I'm gonna lock it in, I'm gonna put this one on here, I preset them at 150 to save a few minutes. And there you go, and there's a reason we call this the cross stop. Okay, I'm gonna take that same board I did, put it on there, and I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna put it in there, and while the machine's running, I'm gonna switch this knob right here to the middle setting. And then I'm gonna plunge. Okay? This is so smooth, I didn't even think I mortised. So I have that one tight, and I have these two with a little bit of play in there, okay? Just like that, all right? But guess what I have on all three? I have glue line strength on the face of the domino, okay? So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll do this piece. And let me see if I mess this up. What's the first thing I gotta do now? What happens on this one has the same sequence, so I gotta switch it back, because I'm gonna go in this direction with it, so they made up. I'm gonna turn it, <coughs> I'm gonna use the flap, I'm gonna do it tight, and then I'm gonna switch it, and that's why I have two cross stops. Oh, that's so cool. So, one of the situations I used to have, and I've seen it several times, is you see how I did that one tight? And you see how that one's tight? And I had done these loose. I forget to switch it back to loose. This one and this one will line up kinda, but because you're shouldering it every time, it gets progressively offset, okay? Where if I just come, if I did the sequence on here and I, uh, duplicate it on here, I have a perfect fit. Just like that. And that end lines up perfectly. Okay? And this is where I usually turn around and go, it worked again! <laughs> so I'm going to pass that around if you guys want to see that. It's really easy. Um, that answers all those questions that people have. A lot of people don't know what that knob does, that, the one that gives you a little extra wiggle room for assembly. Because if we did those all tight and we used those cross stops and I did it 10 feet, would those line up, each one of them? And if I did them all tight, they line up absolutely 100% perfect. But that's not how we assemble, right? Because I would have to stand here, that gentleman down there would have to stand there, and four or five of us would have to lift it up and put it at a perfect 90, right? But they do line up. I've done it over six feet, and it's, it's, it was really tough. I had to get three guys from marketing to come in and help me. But it was, it was pretty good. They actually saw what it was, what it was for, so it was good. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to open it up. Any questions on what I just covered? That's because I'm doing my job okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, God. All right. So, <clears throat> anybody here build cabinets? Woo! Love you, love you, love you. This is one. This is another question I get all the time, or I did until we started. We did this in the live. Here is... 
I'll do it like that. That's my uh, bottom or top, okay? And this is one of my sides, okay? Just like that. Easy enough, right? So I'm gonna take this up, this is my side, I'm gonna label it. This one more so is, it's so important to get the proper labeling because of where you're gonna place your plate. <clears throat> if you've ever built cabinets, let's get this right so I can label it. If you've ever built cabinets like this, and when you're finished, oh, sorry Chris, you're all over, you gotta watch your step, bro. Okay, and you get it, and there's a slight offset like this. Okay, I've seen this a hundred times. Okay, just an offset, just like this. You're not referencing the proper face, and I got a great remedy for this. Okay, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna label this. Woo! This is my side, okay? And I'm gonna take it just like this, because my tops and bottoms are always pinned in between, and this is my bottom. Okay, I'm gonna label bottom, okay? But I'm gonna do this. And Chris, hopefully you can get in here. Hey, I can get that GoPro, look. I'm gonna make a line. Just like this. It's not for to line up my cursor. It's for me to know where I'm placing the plate of my domino. Okay? So, I'm gonna show this. Hopefully this GoPro comes over here. Maybe we can get this, right? Just like this. Oh, how's this work? Just like this. Did I get it? No. How's that? You see, everybody see that line? Hey, I'm finally tech savvy. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Shoot, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's it. Thank you. Right. Man, I think I'm right on schedule. Okay. So you guys saw that line, right? Okay. I do a couple other things. I write here vertical. And the reason I did it, see that line? That's where I'm gonna lay my plate. I just go horizontal. Just keeps my brain right. Okay, and I'm gonna use another thing that comes in the Festool set. This is called a support bracket. Does anybody know what it does? It supports, exactly, okay, good. So whenever you put something on the machine, make sure what? It's on a flat surface, right? Do not put this support bracket on like this. You will not line it up and your domino mortise will go like this. Put it on a flat surface. <laughs> How many people we got on? 168 people are watching around the world, folks. All right. Okay, so now you see the support brackets flush. Is Ian on there? There's a few people that have watched every Festool Live. I haven't scared them yet. I'm excited. Okay, so I'm gonna set this at 20 millimeter. I'm going to take it. I'm gonna bring it back in a tight setting. Okay, and I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna plunge vertically. <clears throat> when I do this, you know what? I'm gonna bring it right here so you folks can see it. When you're plunging this, and you have this sitting here, there's a tendency to turn this on and plunge it in the material. This is why I tell everybody, take it and pinch it on, okay? It makes it really safe. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna use those flaps, just like this, I'm gonna pinch it on. Okay, so there's those two. That's my side, those are my two mortises. Now this one, I don't have to think about it because I have it labeled, right? That plate was right up against that line right there. See it? That plate was right there. This time the plate's gonna be, there's my line. I'm just gonna take it like this and make my mortises. And let's take these. Let's take this. Okay, so you see this? 
I see a lot of people take this because that looks like it's in the center and I put it like this and that gives them the offset. That's the inside. I reference the proper way, the outside. And <laughs> By the way, there have been times where it didn't come out and I'm going, hey, look how nice that looks, good. All right, so if you guys, <laughs> look, how, look how nice that is. Oh, hey, that was, hey, try the feel, I'm here all week. So I'll just like, I'll leave that there so you guys can see it, gals can see it, okay? So thank you. Okay, next. <clears throat> Anybody do beveled goods? Doing a box, doing a waterfall on a table, okay? You're doing a 45 like this. There is little or no room for error when you're doing something that's on three quarter. To the point where I thought there was something wrong with my domino my first month at Festool and I took it down to repair three times. And I said, hey Lester, I go, there's something wrong with the machine. And he went, it's perfect, Sedge. I go, don't tell me it's me. He goes, it's you. <laughs> okay, so I fought this, I fought this, and I fought this, and I finally figured out what I was doing wrong. It was totally me. Okay, but every time I show this, every, I see people in the audience go, yep, I was doing that as well. So pay attention, it's a little bit of a process. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take the bracket off. I know you've never made the mistakes, Garrett. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, you know what? I'm gonna take this, I need, <laughs> Bluetooth. <laughs> okay, so I need, let's see if I can do this so everybody can see it. Well, maybe up here, right? Oh, yeah, 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 that'll work. Okay, look, if I left this set, the height of the domino plate set at 20, it would bring this down here, and this would have what? Blow through, okay? What are you gonna do with that if you get that? No, sell it for more. <laughs> Yeah, it's an architectural defect, right? Okay, good. Okay, good. No, you want to place that domino at the very top. Just like that. And hopefully you can see that. Okay? Now, to get it at the very top, you have to understand the machine. So I'm going to take this. And what you do first is you set, always remember this, set the bevel first. So I'm going to set it at 45, okay? And that's how you set the bevel right here. See that everybody online? I'm forgetting we have people online. Okay, I'm gonna lock the bevel in. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release this lever right here, and I'm gonna pull this gauge block out, just like this, and I'm gonna bottom it out. A telltale sign you have it perfect is you see this little metal here? That metal hits that metal right there and locks in. Okay, and let me show you the result you get with this. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do it incorrectly. Okay. So here, what I'll do is I'll mark my face. I do this every single board. I'm going to mark my face like that. And I'll come back over here. I'm going to do this. You know what? I'm going to do this right here on the table. Let me get a clamp. Just being lazy, that's all. Okay, let's get this. Okay, now, here is where I have had phone calls. That's why you have the four by 20 millimeter because you don't want to get blowout. No, I always want to get as much glue line in there as I can, that's why I choose the five by 30. Okay, but like I said in early days, I wasn't getting the results. So, the I'm gonna use a five by 30, I don't have to change the bit, I'm completely bottomed out. I'm gonna do them tight and you'll see the results. Now when you get really good at this, you can do it on one foot. <laughs> that was for the local crowd. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that in. And this is what I'm gonna say, there's not a room for a lot of error because I could take that and shine it up and I'm bumping on that veneer. Okay, but this is the result. 
you should get. Where that end point or long point matches up, it's perfect and your grain is wrapped. Okay, and you get a perfect glue line. And the other beautiful thing about this is you don't have to have any fancy clamps, two Bessie right angle clamps, and it's locked right in there. It's a locked joint now. There's no squishing around or creeping up and down the, the joint. Okay, so there you go. That's a wicked nice hat. Bahaba. Yes, yeah, so are you from Maine? Really? You from Bahaba? You went up to visit? Sure. They got, a, they got a wicked nice tool store there, just south of that, Captain Tinkerman's, it's really good. Okay, so, it sounds simple, I did that, right? Here's what I know you have been doing and I did in the early days, and it drove me completely crazy. Okay, let's, let's try this. I'm gonna start over. Because you're gonna get back to the shop, I promise you you can get back to the shop and you're not gonna set the bevel first, you're gonna bottom it out first. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it that back to my settings, okay? I have it at 20 on the gauge block, I'm gonna take it out and watch. I'm gonna bottom it out, okay? To the point, I'm gonna take it down here and I'm gonna grab an audience member to assist me. Could you help me with this? Of I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it down and can you push that down and bottom it out? Perfect, and lock it back there. Okay, everybody saw that she did that, right? Okay, now I'm gonna set the bevel. All right, I'm gonna bring it back over. Woo! Okay. <clears throat> because this used to drive me crazy. And I'm gonna lock it back in. That Bluetooth is, woo! Does anybody have the new Bluetooth? I know it's three years old, but it, I still call it new. It is amazing. I love it. How many people have a Domino? How many people have done this joint before? How many people had that for a result? Huh? Oh, uh, I did. Uh, yeah? Okay. So hang on a second. What happens is the machine doesn't completely bottom out. It gets hung up on the cursor on the flap. So watch, if we can do this correctly, now it's bottomed out. So set the bevel first and then it bottoms out. And a double check, it bottoms out right there on the metal to metal, okay? Don't send it into repair like I did. Thank God it was about 50 feet away. Good. Whew. How am I doing? Butt joint, bevel joint. Okay. Ooh, might have time for extra. Extra, what, how, what time is it? Wicked, okay, good. We got extra time. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions at the moment? Uh, familiarity. That's another word I can't say. I can't say drawers, I say draws. Okay, um, not to ignore your question. There's times where I've gone right into the Vaxis pod and ruined it. So I know I can nail that in front of a bunch of people and Chris doesn't have to repair. I'm just kidding. I always try to show the full Festool system. Whether you have a Vaxis or a clamps, they work fantastic. Any other questions? Yeah. I, it's not necessary, but I am a wicked creature of habit. I always set the bevel first. Okay, Thanks. you're welcome. I'm gonna show you one more, okay? Because you know how it's not heavy, but it's bigger, right? The XL. And I was down at a, um, a school or a training and I was showing somebody and they all went, there was 18 of them and they all went, okay? Say, I, I did that on three quarter because I know the settings, okay? I think I have a sample that I can show you something that might help you. What? Oh, the mistake? Right there. I don't make mistakes. Ha-ha! Oh! No. 
Man, is that a strong joint? Okay, so hopefully you, you'll understand this. I did this with the XL. No, I did this with the 500. Okay. How did I align it? What was my offset? I needed my domino right here, and this is the domino I wanted. Okay, you guys all see that? It's called eyeballing it properly. I hate measuring sometimes or using settings. So what I did is I took my, I think this is an eight, <clears throat> eight by 40. So I set my plunge depth, 20 and 20. Okay, but I, I just divided that in half. And I aligned it right here over the, the seam. Okay, and this is where I see people struggle, whether with the 500 or the 700. Trying to line up this with your 500, watch. I saw somebody at the school going like this and fumbling and bumbling with it. They loosened this up. They were moving up the height of their plate to set it, okay? Take the machine off. Look, it's so much easier. Take your fence off, right? Look, you can do it right here. You don't have all that back heavy, what, of that machine or that motor to do it, and it's, e it's so much easier. And that center line, did you know there was a center line on your 500 right there? That's perfectly milled. So that's the center. So I could take that, look, bring it <laughs> right over. Give me the other one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is, and this is gonna live forever on the internet. Okay, good. <laughs> like I care. Look, see how you can line it right up? It's so much easier. Watch, I'll show you. Look. Okay, so um, it, do we have to bottom out the plate on the XL? No, but it's always good to do it. Look. See how I can line that right up like that? Look, I'll bring it over here so you all can see it. Look. See that? That's my center line. If I had that motor on here, it'd be so tough. Think about your XL. Okay, look. Just bring it right in there. See that? And you have a little mark on your XL fence that does that. And I'll show you folks over here. See that? Look, you can bring it in just like that. And that's your center. And you go, whoop, lock it in. So take the motor off is what I'm getting at for bevel work. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it one step further. I'm going to get the XL so you can see the XL. So I can show you where that mark is. And your mark on your XL, I'll show you right here. That's your center line for your XL. Maybe it's better right there. That's the center line right there. See it? And that's the center line right there on your XL. See it? So who's doing waterfall slab work right now? Does anybody, when you're doing waterfall slab, you could take that, make your mark just like this. Make sure it's set at 45, just like this. Take it over, look, this is that extra long rod makes a really good handle, I'm just kidding. And look, you can take that, loosen this, and you can guide that line right in there. And all these makers were blown away because every one of them had a domino. They were always struggling trying to line up that mark. They knew how to describe it, but they didn't know the markings on the machine. Can you see that center line right there? Yes. See that? Who's got an XL here? Anybody? Yeah, I'll bring it over so you guys can see it. Sorry, I'm all over the place. But there you go. See the center line right there? See it? And tell me this isn't easier without that big motor tugging you off or you're balancing it like this trying to get it in. Cool. Okay, we're doing good? What we got, big... Garrett, what are we doing? We good? What is it? Okay, good. Okay, so... Lou, you're still here? There you are. So Lou comes up to me at the beginning... And he was asking me about, he's building tables. And one of the things I wanted to cover today for everybody, <laughs> that never happened to me, okay? And this is the, one of the number one questions I've been getting pretty much lately is this one. 
I'm looking to buy one Domino. Which one do I need? 500 versus the 700. Regular versus the XL. Okay, but Lou's question was exactly what I'm gonna cover now <laughs> to show you, okay? He's building tables, and we decided your table legs square are probably an inch and a half to two inches. And you wanna double them up. Perfect, with a four inch apron skirt. Perfect. It'll, this is your machine, <laughs> okay? Um, I will always ask somebody, what are you building the majority of the time? Somebody says small furniture, cabinet tree, um, knock down, because we have domino connectors now, okay? Um, the 500. Well, I'm building big stuff. Well, guess what you need? <laughs> you need what? A 700. But everybody thinks it's because it's a thicker tenon. Eh, yes, that gives you more shear strength. But I said it early on, I've said it several times. It's long grain to long grain adhesion. So this is the question would come up, and I got my sample right here. Okay, here's my apron skirt. Okay, now the biggest domino or longest domino, and for the, this is what you have to decide, is the length of tenon. Because the longest tenon on the XL, and I think this is the thickest one, is a 14 by 140. You can go into each piece, 70 millimeter each way. Each way. When we first came out with the XL, I said, now that's a tenon. Okay, good. Okay, so. We used to build, we used to build these, and I used to do sliding dovetails as my connection point in here. And because uh, someone said, hey, can we use the domino? I went, no. Because if you think about it, I'm going into each piece, and the longest tenon I can use for this application, because of the thickness of my apron skirt, is an 8 by 50. So I'm going in 25 millimeter and 25 millimeter. That's one inch, one inch. Even if I double it up, look, as I pull it apart, I have one of these and one of these in here. And I put it in, is that enough glue line? No, because that's end grain. You get 0.0. .0. You, this is why woodworking joinery, you're relying on this tenon. Is everybody following me on that? Because look, look. Okay, so this is a piece of wood, right? Okay, and this is end grain on here. If I took glue, the world's best glue, and went like that, and left it overnight, left it 20 years, right? Is it gonna adhere? Little or not. What if I took a little glue, rubbed it on here, long grain, long grain, and rubbed it on here like that? What's gonna happen the next morning when that's dry? You're gonna pull fiber to fi we're gonna pull fiber away, right? Because it's long grain to long grain adhesion. What we're doing in woodworking joinery a lot of the times with mortise and tenon, we're just doing long grain to long grain, but it's cross grain. It's the same thing. The lignus cell links long grain to long grain. So Lou, if you said you were doing like a three and a half by a three and a half, doubling up wouldn't work. This is a 100. I'm going two inches and two inches in each way. I have plenty of long grain. Doubling up, I would say, yeah, it'll, it'll be rock solid, but not for a long time. But you're only going into a smaller piece, and that's perfect. You follow? I answered his question. <laughs> All right? So that was okay, huh? And he asked that. I went, did someone pay you to ask me that question? Because this is how I was going to end this segment today. Because that's what I want people to understand. A lot of the times, I recommend a Domino 500. I'll go, hey, you're building big stuff, like an interior door. You need that long grain to long. You need a longer tenon. You're building a frame for a table that has a large leg to apron skirt. You need all that extra glue line. Absolutely, that's why you need it. Okay, but a lot of people doing cabinetry, 500 is perfect. And then you'll buy a 700 when you build big stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> so it's uh, my first answer is always like, you need both, and you do. So, all right. Any more questions? I, and by the way, I'm going to stay for a few minutes afterwards. I just, I'm going to call out the, uh, the people online in a few minutes. But does anybody have a quick question for me? Yes, sir. Do I use what? 
on the XL? No. The, um, the question was, can you use smaller dominoes on the XL? No. <clears throat> when we were doing the test with the XL, please hear me out on this. Here's, here's, here's the tenons that the XL works with. I mean, the 500, you have a 4, 5, 6, 8, and 10. The Domino XL has uh, 8s, 10s, 12s, and 14s. The cutters are completely different because the plunge depth is a, is a lot more on the XL. Okay? In our testing, we were doing things where we were trying to do <clears throat> the smaller domino cutters on there, and we were breaking bits. Okay? Because the swing and the RPM with the oscillation is not good. So that is my recommendation to get both. The bits are not interchangeable. Cool. Woo! We're going to do a wrap? Look at you. Okay, so this is the first time we did the call out of the board digitally. So let's see if I can actually read this. Okay, is there a lot? <coughs> How should I do this? Should I do across? Okay, so here we go. We have people, everybody, we have people besides yourselves online. I'm going to call them out. We have Berlin, Connecticut, Annapolis, Marin, Pump and Bill, Australia. are always there. Tynesburg, Massachusetts, Reading, Berkshire, UK, Fenton, Michigan. I know who that is. Leather by Pat, Dragonfly. Hello, Michelle. Hello. What's his name? Patrick. We have Fayetteville, Georgia, Somas, California, Lebanon, Indiana. You know who I bet that is? I bet you it is, Minnie. Min Min, we love you. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, the French Alps, Scotland, Kingman, Arizona. Wow. Valdak, Manchester, UK, Naples, Florida, Dublin, Ireland. I'll be there next October. Orange, Australia, Medford, Mass. You hear I said that? It's Medford. Hang on a second. Pull you up, Washington. Go. Oh, look how you broke that up for me. <coughs> Wolfsburg, Germany. France. Bahamas. Houston. Portugal. Union, Maine. He's always there. Georgetown, Texas. Italy. Whitefish, Montana. Houston, Texas. Ottawa, California, Canada. Belgium. Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Island of Bermuda. Tata, Hungary. Finland. Sacramento. Wolvega, The Netherlands. Yolarvi, Finland, you're always there. Sacramento, Dundee, Scotland, Dundee, Scotland, and Christopher from Malta, you're always there. And I know you're there from East Yorkshire. Everybody, thank you so much. Thank you, Hatville Hardware and Lumba, for being there for us today. I hope to see you all next year. I hope to see you on Festool Live every Friday at noon. Everybody, happy Festool Friday. And thank you for being here. It's, we love you. Thank you. And we love you online. Woo!